let's talk about this piece today. Uh, what is the next step? How do they move forward with what they know now and where it's going? And what they've learned so far. So the things they're doing right is um, things look pretty symmetrical. I think they did a good job with that. Um, I think the colors are pretty matched. Very, very nice. Uh, they didn't choose a skin tone that was just, uh, sorry, a lipstick tone that didn't match the skin tone. They seem to be matching colors right. Things they did wrong, which is my favorite shit to talk about, is <laughs> things they did wrong is the, um, the things they did wrong are, right? It's R. Uh, the background is too bright. And it needs to change if you want it to start participating in the illustration. It could be the most simple change in the background. I'm just going to pick a random color. And then um, I'm going to try to do a better job with my lasso tool. The reason we want the background to be just a little bit darker, uh, it's still lighter than the object, is because we want to add color to it of some kind or even just if it was a gray tone you know anything i just i'm sick of the gray tone so i'm just going to give us something different to look at um it could be the most basic background something like that goes a long way all right so background then canvas what's happening with your canvas your canvas is a basic square tile it doesn't do anything it's not offering any kind of negative space that supports the painting it's the most boring type of canvas you could pick because there's just nothing going on and so what I'm gonna do once I have that space is just complete the character I'm gonna give us some shoulders and um, a simple darker value here for the shirt all right, really, really basic changes before, after. It created this world around the character that made the character feel more alive, almost. Small, small changes that are not skill-related. They are just, um, what's even the word? Choice, choices that help produce a more believable world. They're realism. It's realism. This is what realism is. Realism isn't just about having the perfect amount of contrast and edges and shadows. It's about decisions like this that help build the world around the character. It's so small. It's so cheap. It doesn't cost you anything, but it changes everything. So the next thing I'm going to do is just um, complete the rest of the painting, which is just kind of adding the hair in some areas. Right? It doesn't cost you anything to make these changes at all. And then I'm just gonna give like a simple v-neck for the sweater. She seems like a very simple girl. So I'm just gonna do something like that. <clears throat> all right, so again, these are very, very simple, simple changes that have nothing to do with skill. Now I'm gonna start making skill changes. The skill changes I'm about to make have to do with contrast and edges and anatomy and characterization and rotation and texture. So there's a big, like, wide variety of choices I'm making right now that are going to be all over the place and they're going to be hard to follow. And it's you're just going to see the before and after and say, oh, wow, that looks better. But I want you to know which exact changes I'm making accredited to which fundamental, which is why I'm making the big distinction right now between skill-based changes and changes that are just cinema, that are just framing, that are just staging and um, props, uh, really. That's all it is. So everything I made up until this point was just about that. So now let's talk about anatomy first, because anatomy is one of those fundamentals. Once you know it and have applied it and have advanced in it, even if you are bad at textures, even if you are bad at lighting and form, anatomy still makes you look like you got skills. Okay, so anatomy is one of those things that you could easily render an eye perfectly, but if the eye is not anatomically correct, it's just going to look like abstract and abstraction of some kind or a style that isn't necessarily pleasing to the eye. 
what's pleasing to the eye is what we're used to. Um, that's just the base. So anatomy is that fundamental that if you spend time understanding it, memorizing it, you really, really see a huge skill jump in your work within months. So anatomy, it, how do you practice it with memorization? That's really it. But also with feeling, like you actually got to feel up the anatomy. So sculpting, sculpting is amazing because it helps you create a physical memory of how those forms move. For me personally, that's how it feels. When I paint an arm or a leg, I can kind of feel my way around it because I just, I know my own body, I know my own shape and I create it in the pieces that I look at. So that's, that has a lot to do with how you memorize is you're just like, you know, there's a bump in the stomach, you know, there's a little bit of bone in that area. Cause I know that there's bone in my, you know, the back shoulder muscles and my, and my collarbones. I can tell because it feels different pushing on my, on my biceps versus pushing on my collarbone. So those things signal to me changes in form. Uh, presence of bone structure and so anatomy is one of those things you can sit there and draw over and over again or you can start sculpting and get an even better more reliable tangible memory but that's a whole other thing uh, so anatomy is a big one so that's the one I'm going to do now so for her when I say anatomy I want her to look more human the way she looks right now is not human uh, because there are some really um, key things about her face that have nothing to do with beauty. They just don't feel human enough. There's the size of the bone structure between her eyes. Does not feel natural. There's the lack of structure in her nose. Just It's almost like it's a, a, a nondescript kind of, no, it's not very nose-like, uh, which is like a nose has a lot more uh, recognizable rigid grooves to it that look nothing like a blob of flesh. You don't want the nose to look like some kind of basic shape. You don't want it to look like an actual square. Then there's the eyebrows and what the eyebrows are doing. The eyebrows seem like they're really scared of the edge of the uh, uh, the hairline. The eyebrows will and, and, and have hidden under hair. There's nothing I need to just use a brush for that later. There's nothing that's stopping that. The shape of the eyes is almost like cartoony with a bit of realism. They don't actually pinch on the insides the way eyes do. Eyes pinch at the insides because there's a little anchor in here. And the beauty of the, of the eye change I'm about to make is just this. I'm just lifting the outer corner. That is a beauty related change. And then I'm just going to make sure the pupils and the iris are perfectly uh, circular. Things you did right is you kept the pupil and the iris nice and small and realistic. The bigger they are, in my opinion, the creepier they are because they tend to remove that realism and place in it some kind of like evil pixie look to it, which a lot of people really like and they don't know they like because anime has normalized that um, in the way people perceive uh, drawn anatomy. So that inner corner is getting pinched. And so just take a look. These are anatomy changes. They, they look more realistic, but we haven't changed the character before, after. I just want you to take the time to look at how they grouped up, how they added up. These are very small changes, guys. Before, after, before, after, before, after. So that's the, that's the thing with anatomy is that it, it adds up the small little tiny changes. And the thing is, those changes are elusive. So they don't always, they're not always visible to you. The, the far tail of the eyebrow for a three quarter view face, do we see the other ear of the three quarter view? No. So we shouldn't see the other side of the eyebrow. We shouldn't see the tail of the eyebrow because it's on the other side of the face. Then there's the, the lack of realism in how separate the eyes are from each other. There is a beauty level to how eyes are separated. But then there is the fact that eyes are, um, when they're too close together, it no longer looks human um, to a level, to a level. And so I'm making sure that they have that separation between them. In fact, it's right where it was before I did my edits anyway. All right, then there's the cheekbones. And I want the cheekbones to look less like plastic surgery and more like just natural grooves of the far cheek. So usually we have a cheekbone, 
a little bump and then the bump of the of the mouth muscles and another little bump and then the bump of the chin it's not so much that we're aging her it's that we are adding contours surface contours the the, the worlds within worlds the small little tiny uh, neighborhoods of muscles that exist that cannot be generalized with one fell swoop of a cheek contour before way too simplified the cheek is a lot more complex than a, just a simple line like that after before after do you see what I'm saying when I say anatomy and then there's the hairline you're showing that the hairline is starting right here at the parting of the hair the hairline actually rises much higher and in females, it's even higher than men. So at, at the younger age, eventually men's hairline just disappears. Poor guys. Well, they get all that privilege in the patriarchy, so we gotta keep it balanced. <laughs> we gotta keep it balanced. Um, the way nature balances, it just takes all our hair away. Poor guys. Um, anyway, so uh, the hairline right here. <laughs> I don't even want to look at the chat. The hairline right here needs to go up. Because female foreheads are very dome-like, um, so the the female foreheads are very like curved and baby-like. We don't really get that huge change in testosterone at a certain age. Boys' faces change from sweet and and cute to just monsters. <laughs> so much male hate today. I'm joking. I love my I love my male followers. I'm sorry. Um, they just get these really really thick bones in the eyebrow bone and the in the forehead and the cheek and the jaw. So all of that uh, ends up uh, uh, changing the way the forehead looks. But females don't go through that huge change. So they keep some of that baby-like feature. So remember the rule. Do you guys remember this rule? Female beauty is baby. Male beauty is young female or older female. Uh, sorry, not young female. Uh, uh, Middle-aged female or older female. It's really weird, but th that's exactly how it works. Um, so remember that. Male beauty is older female, and female beauty is baby. Uh, it's the big eyes, the bigger lips, this, this kind of like a squared off, ovally shape. Um, usually that's like the whole, you know, the whole definition behind a babe, you know, a woman who's a babe. She's just got all of those really, really uh, uh, beautiful, lovable things that evolution taught us is cute so that we take care of our babies when they're born. And that's what beauty is, just things that look like a baby. And this isn't just my opinion, this is proven scientifically. They actually went in and looked at what it is, what is it about babies that is so adorable to us and how similar it is to what we perceive as beautiful in, 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 like in life, in people. So before, after. These are anatomy changes that kind of change the way we're looking at this character. We see just a bit more muscle structure and anatomy visible. Okay, so um, then I'm going to do the realism changes that have to do with light. So let me fix this hair because it changed. And the, this is when you're going to say, oh yeah, this is why, you know, light is a more optimal thing to study. And I'm not going to argue with you. A, a form study is never a waste of time. But when I see this much missing anatomy knowledge in a person's study, if, as their teacher, if I was this, this artist's teacher, I would say uh, stop and go do some uh, uh, photo ref studies of portraits. Do some traceover diagrams. Learn the, the missing muscle knowledge that you have um, and, uh, and, and then just obviously work from uh, reference continuously until you feel more confident in working without reference. So students who have this kind of issue with their, with their anatomy are instantly like given forms that, I mean, uh, anatomy studies and, and, and photo ref portrait studies. And so what I'm gonna do now is just kind of figure out what's happening here. So now I'm gonna render and actually, before I do that, I do want to make sure that the that the eyes are symmetrical. The liquify was not completed. The eyebrow here is too low. And um, we'll just go from there. So the first thing that's missing is the lower eyelid 
block. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. I'm defaulting to the basic, basic standards of eye anatomy, which is the two eyelids that need to be addressed. The next thing is the block above the eye socket. So look at me, I'm blocking right now. All I'm doing is blocking. I'm finding surface areas and I'm blocking them in with the idea of the light source in mind. The next thing I'm going to do is just create a nostril hole really quickly, make sure the other one represents the, the change in the, in the rotation of the nose. I'm going to create that nice big block of the lower side of the nose, so I'm picking a light source now. Form means light source is suddenly there. Anatomy, not always. You don't have to think about the light source when you think about anatomy because it's got nothing to do with the light source. They're separate entities. The light doesn't change the way our anatomy works. Not on an evolutionary standpoint, obviously. <laughs> the reason we have eyelids is because of the sun. And then I'm just getting rid of these excessive shadows on the side of the nose. Really don't know what you're doing with the lighting, but I'm going to go ahead and make it symmetrical again, defaulting to the standards. I'm blocking in and then you guys have already seen me do this. I'm blending the eyebrows into the skin. Why am I doing that? Does anybody remember that from the class I did on eyebrows? And I'm making sure that all gets blended in. Strength is nice and low. No caterpillars, exactly, because it's not natural. It has to look like the hair is growing out of the skin. To create softer edges, breaks up the blocked form. To ac accentuate the skull shape, to make sure they don't look painted on, excellent. They, so they, they look like they're growing out of the skin. The smudge creates the illusion of the texture. I'm blocking that light right under the eye. And then, of course, you guys have already seen me uh, paint lips many, many times already. Built half the new followers on Instagram just from a lip video. <laughs> um, and so I'm adding a little bit of shadow on either side of the lips. I'm adding that shadow right under that whole cylinder of the lower lip. A little bit on that lip as well. Okay, so see these blocks I'm making. And then I'm going to do something crazy and... Cover the whole face in the mid-tone because the way you painted this, you used way too much contrast way too soon. And so there was nowhere else for me to go. The only other place for me to go to create highlights, look at the skin tone, is to literally pick white. And even that wouldn't have gone much higher. So we reduce the values. I mean, I mean, that's white. But if we reduce the values so that we can climb a little bit higher, we can't use this skin, this tone on skin. So I'm saying within reason, we can't really go much higher without pulling from values that just don't make sense to build up the last stretch of the, of the form. So what we do is we reduce the value and delete away at what we feel like we need, starting with the nose, which is an elevation. It's a mountain in the middle of the face. Then we go to the secondary elevations, which are the cheekbones, one big slide right into the upper lip and then block and block for the cheeks. A little bit of extra value here and there, making sure the sides of the nose don't feel too dark. A big old block for the forehead. Um, what's happening with my Photoshop? And then a block for the halfway line of the eyeball because the eyeball is a sphere so it gets a core shadow. And then a block for the chin. These are just standard blocks. These are basic go-to blocks you learn from the 14-day challenge. You learn from uh, just standard portrait painting. They're not magic blocks and there's like the secret codex of blocks that we can use on the face that no one's sharing with you and only the best artists know them. No, these are the standard sorrow head, uh, planar head type blocks that we know and are very aware of. Um, in, in the world of portraiture and I cover them probably the thing that I cover the most in my channel 
So they are there accessible to you in my video history. Just look up blocking, any any 14 day challenge, um, my masterclass, nearly half of my reels all have some level of blocking to them. And uh, so they're there, the, no the blocking knowledge is accessible to you always. It's a free resource. It's an open subject that is always discussed. It's not magic. Blocking is just deciding which surfaces on average, get the most light and the most shadow and giving a big block for those surfaces so that we're not su suckered into blending too early and thinking, oh yeah, I'm blending, I'm art, I'm doing the art. But really, you're just destroying the structure. So whenever, you know, anybody tells you oh, art is all about blending, say no, art is all about blocking, finding the light. Art is about identifying the light and the surface areas that that light touches. So now I blend, now that I have a good structure, in between all of these blocks, all of these surface areas. And I'm blending away, starting with the cheeks, which are the fattiest pockets in the face. All right, and then moving into the forehead, which is the most soft curvature in the face for females, but for males as well, but not that much more. And then just constantly uh, battling with the side of the nose, making sure it never feels like it's trying to be an eye socket. All right, and then moving into the, the kind of third place or equally second place curvy areas of the face, the negative space of the face, non-features, which are the chin and the lower lip area, moving into the lips, which I left for last when it comes to liquify, because I just want to take my time kind of showing you guys what's happening there. Before I do that, actually, actually, yeah, I'll do that now. Never mind. Um, so then filter, liquify. Again, you guys know what it takes to make lips look like they're in three-quarter view. We just have to, first of all, before I do that, there's a symmetry line that runs off the nose. So this symmetry line right here shows us where the rest of the cupid's bow will go yours is going all the way over here and it has a symmetrical uh lip so it's like we had a side view nose but a front view lip does that make sense it looks good as a cartoon right oh yeah it looks beautiful as a cartoon look at that style woo but none of this translates into a rendered version i actually really like that it's so cute right um, but it's only only in, into the lines and then after the lines are dropped nothing works anymore So that's why you have to do trace over diagrams So you see how it's a front view lip on a side view nose on a, on a three-quarter view nose. That's got to change. We got to change that um, And uh, Oops filter liquify Picasso. Yeah, it was very Picasso exactly which is the charm of it that those those mixed perspectives uh, but Picasso stole a lot of art from African culture, so let's not talk about Picasso right now. Um, so <laughs> I'm just realigning this with the symmetry line. And I'm pushing everything. So now look, it looks like a little petal, a little leaf. That's the key behind three-quarter view lips, is that everything, all the weight has been pushed to the side of rotation. And I'm pushing the lips out so that we have that three-quarter view lip look. Do you see that? So the lips are starting to look more and more rotated the more we weigh them more on one side than the other. And then making sure they're both symmetrical. Look at the difference. Front view lip, three-quarter view lip. Front view lip, three-quarter view lip. Okay, and then that lip gets a whole separate set of core shadows and highlights based off the presence of the light source. So half of the lower lip gets light. Most of the upper lip gets shadow, except for that very tippy top of it that gets light, just like that, but a much lower degree since she's wearing lipstick. And as I showed you guys, lipstick, it is like a breaking of the rules of shadow. Everything gets darker. I'm using that same red on the corners of the lips so that they feel like they're weighing on that dimple or the dimpling of the closed mouth to show that all that extra skin 
that can open the mouth is being tucked into a dimple. Just like your knuckles. Look down at your knuckles. You see a bunch of skin, extra skin. It kind of looks kind of ugly. And then, but pinch that. Pinch that, you know, that extra skin on your knuckles, on your fingers, and try to bend your finger. You can't. All that skin there is put there for future use. <laughs> um, so that future use is no longer possible if you don't have that extra skin. That's exactly what all this jumbling of skin is on the side. So the mouth can open and do everything it needs to do. And so that creates shadows because it's just a big dimpling, a big traffic area of skin. And then I'm going to grab one of these shadows that you have and I'm going to just use it for that lower lip area to create that little pocket. Okay, and then I'm going to introduce to this skin some redness, some, 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 some like blood. Uh, so I'm using, I got that shadow mid-tone. All I'm doing is sliding the hue slider down. And I'm using that on all the areas I expect shadows to be. So that the shadows have a bit more redness and in having redness in them have purple in them because there is purple there is red in purple so if we introduce red we're introducing one half of the purple formula meaning we have cooled down that area and i'm using it for that lower cheek area and then just finding any blush tone that i feel like out of makeup or otherwise would look good on her face on normal and I'm using it around the mid-tones of the cheeks. The blush tone really elevates the skin tone and makes it feel like there is a traffic of blood in these areas. And the head is one big high traffic area. All the blood that's being pumped hangs out in the head before it finally moves down. Just like your fingers are more red, your toes are more red, but everything else is kind of neutral in the body. So that, that goes for painting nude figures as well. There's not a lot of redness in, in, in the non-traffic areas and just the straight lanes. And so I'm using some extra red around the nose. And then I'm flipping the canvas to make sure I'm not losing sight of certain things. The eyebrows, once again, I want to change them. They feel like they're existing uh, without considering the brow bone. So this is the brow bone, but brow bone bump, brow bone bump. Um, so that brow bone bump uh, needs to be matched to the eyebrow. And I know this is a lot of changing, but this is an example for this student who submitted this work today. This is your message. That this is how much you have left to learn. And it's not a lot. How, what's the proof that it's not a lot? That a fact that I can do it in one hour or less. Remember, I started late today. Um, so you can learn this. If, if, if what you need to learn can be fit into one one hour presentation, it's not a lot. It's not a lot of stuff, especially if it's just basic technical skills. And most of the things that I'm covering take time to uh, 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 display in front of you. So that's the only reason this is taking forever. But the list is like five things. The blocking, the blending, the anatomy, the form, the lights, the edges. These are, these are nothing. This, this, it's a cakewalk, right? Is that what they say? Cakewalk. Um, and so I'm just blending out the eyes now. I'm blending the eyebrows in a little bit more. And I want to make the eyebrows look like they're a bit more sparse. She's kind of a little bit more on the pale side. So uh, pale skin, just based off what I know, have less hair, less hairier eyebrows, like Mediterranean skin, Arab skin tones usually are assigned with much thicker hair, much thicker eyebrows. So, I mean, I've seen uh, white girls with really thick eyebrows. It, it, these are just generalizations I'm making to help me make decisions. You had very short eyebrows in your piece, so I'm just finding the equivalent of that sparse and short eyebrow that you made, but in realism. And then it just wouldn't make much sense to give her like Frida Kahlo eyebrows or, or um, Athena eyebrows, I call them, which is those really, really strong Grecian eyebrows. And I'm trying to make sure her skin tone, which is like more of a ginger color, 
to stay in the eyebrows as well, which you did very well. Another thing you did very well. And I'm blending, 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 making sure that brow bone and the nose line don't feel rigid or overstructured. And I feel myself tunnel visioning right now. It's almost like instinctive. You can feel it happen, which is basically you don't want to look away from what you're working on. And always make sure you look away. And if you're having trouble looking away, zoom out because zooming out is the best way to interrupt your tunnel vision. And so that's when you see me zoom out all the way into that God mode, uh, a zoom out, that's me noticing I've tunnel visioned. And I'm just rounding out the eyes. I'm also going to give a shadow for the lash line. Just over here. And that would not, you know what, I'm gonna do that with this different brush. Um, and that's gonna make the lashes feel suddenly so realistic. because they're casting shadows. They're actually sticking out, catching some shadow. And then in a new layer, I'm gonna find any old value I have nearby that's got some red in it, and I'm building the eye socket line, which is radially dropped into the eye socket, brush stroke one, two, three, shrinking my brush with open and closed square brackets, and using a hard round brush to delete everything under that socket line and now we have just a more believable eye socket that rejects light in the formation that wraps around the pinching of that skin between the eyeball and the brow bone and i'm just feathering with the soft brush until it feels nice and structured and contoured all right so beautiful beautiful contrast very very little effort and contrast comes hand in hand with hard edges. I know this is really, really adding up and it's it's getting to be kind of uh, long winded, this critique, but there I just want to cover everything to the best of my ability so that you can see step by step the route you have to take in your journey to get to wh where wh what's left to be done based off where you started in the before. A waterline that's a bit more red, I'm a bit more pink, sorry. That's that skin that's visible that can't be covered up because it's just the thickness of the lash of the, of the eyelid. The eyelid anatomy on the inside, the flesh on the inside, the pink stuff is visible from the eyes. I'm gonna give us a bit of a, like a pinch for the inner corner. You can do anything you want with this corner. You can make it lighter, you can make it darker. You get away with literally everything. You can have a, a little tiny highlight blob right in the middle. You can make it pink, you can make it more red. Everything goes with that little area. Except like, you know, pure white or pure black or anything like that. And I'm going to use a little bit of a brownie black, sort of, and just thickening the lashes on the outside. And then I'm going to use a bit of the water, of the, of the white of the eye, on the pupils and the iris. That makes them feel like they're actually underwater, which they are. There's a lot of water around the eye. I'm just going to clean up this area and use close to pure white for the specular highlights. This, this should be done zoomed out, but I think it's okay where I am now. And that wakes up the eyes, makes them feel more alive. And I'm going to use a bit more black for the lash line. Not too much since she's a bit more of the ginger color, which means her lashes as well have more of that color ginger skin is that a polite way of referring to people who are redheaded is ginger respectful like sounds like it's derogatory but then there's brunette and blonde you know what i'm saying so i don't know um but anyway it, it, it the the red-haired peoples tend to be a little bit more lighter in the eyebrow hair and lighter in the lash line and then darken and again, I'm just extending that shadow of the lash line all the way around to the end. And that's, that's what's waking up the eye. It's this shadow, this super secret, not so secret in my channel shadow 
And I'm just adding a little bit of blending on the inner corner of the eyelid just to, ma to make it so that there's fat in that lower eyelid area. It's mostly extra skin because remember that extra skin thing? That happens around the lower eyelids as well. And I'm adding a block of highlight for the lower eyelid. And, and now I'm just going to try to make both pupils uh, exactly the same size, looking at exactly the same thing, which adds a load of realism. Like, oh my God. The amount of realism you get from making the eyes, the amount of read, the amount of realism points you get from making the eyes look like they're in the same, looking at the same direction before, after. They were a little bit wonky before, after a little bit less wonky. And I'm just increasing. No, no, not like that. I'm just trying to make them look like they're the same size. Just increasing the sizes here. And all these people who follow them and pay for this tutorial that only tells them the most basic shit that I've been teaching for a really long time and they could just have it here for free and not lose that, what, 20 bucks that person's charging? It's just, it's, it just makes me want to cry. It literally makes me want to cry because I'm just like, like oh my God. Um, and then I'm just going to try to round off the eyes one more time. For the lips, I'm going to blend away a little bit more, picking a sh shadow color that's just a little darker, using it on the corner of the lips, using it on the, on the start of the lips, those little corners that climb up, using that highlighter on the cupid's bow, letting that climb up a little bit as well. The cupid's bow catches some light. And then using that shadow for the lower lip area, Not so much to outline her lips, just to find a, you know, a, a core shadow for that lip. And then trying to build that right here. Beefing with other content creators. Oh, that's, no, I can't do that. I don't want to go down as that. I want to go down as the crazy form study lady that lives in the forest. <laughs> That's my goal, man. That's my goal for when I get older. All right, so I'm just um, blending this all out. Blending this out, blending this out. An overblended lip is a well-rendered lip, but not when it has lipstick, because you gotta be a little careful, but we also don't wanna have a harsh lasso mechanical line for the lips with lipstick, even then. Nobody really puts their lipstick on with a microscope. And then I'm going to get that same reddish blackish color and use it on the nostrils just to darken them a touch more. And so in this case, because the previous face was so underdeveloped, I had to rely a lot on my own template. So that's why I added the nostril and I added everything else. But I really would need a reference if I was supposed to make it exactly like the previous student posted. And usually they don't post it with with references. Remember guys, if you use a reference, you have to post with a reference or else we'll just bug you until you do. And we can tell. Um, And I'm just blending up into the nose, letting some of that highlight hang out on the bridge of the nose to give that same wide bridge that you might have intended. And I just want to make like last minute changes, which is either you shrink the head around the face or you increase the size of the face into the head because the head is too small. The face is too small for the head. And so I'm just increasing the size of her head proportionately to fit, sorry, I'm increasing the size of her face proportionately to fit with the size of her head. 
the head and the face, if you have issues with that anatomy, um, you really should study a head without hair for a little while and then sketch in the hair by leaving the layer translucent so you can understand where the skull really ends. So see before it was too small and her head was kind of enlarged and then after it's kind of fitting in with the rest. And I'm going to show you now some mir miracle core shadows. Are you guys ready for the miracle core shadows? Let me show you, baby. So layer on darken. You grab the shadow color. The first miracle core shadow is the missing core shadow under the chin that you guys forget about right here. Okay, it's not so much to make her chin disappear. It's just enough to make it look like the chin tucks in. Then there's the core shadow of the whole head, which I call the beard shadow. Make sure it stays on darken. As I shrink the brush, I add more of that shadow. All right, so there's that guy. And then I delete away it wherever there's highlights. Obviously the nose is not part of the beard shadow, nor are the upper lip areas or, or the chin because it breaks out of the shadow. But this shadow right here recedes the face into and out of the, the light and makes for a more believable core shadow of the big shape of the head, which is that sphere, that, that, uh, that oval shape. Then there's this forgotten core shadow, which is not so much a core shadow, it's a rotation stacking that reads as a shadow. But it's only in three quarter view do we see the skin on the far side slowly recede and darken because the skin is stacking the horizon line is many layers of skin between us and the edge and so to make a more believable uh, recession of skin along the outside edge we have to dress up the edge with some shadow do you, do you see that it's an invisible little shadow, but it makes such a huge difference to that edge. It makes it feel so much more organic and believable. And you can have an even smaller version of it hugging the edge of every piece of anatomy, especially for light skin. When you guys paint pale skin, it tends to glow. You guys forget about these little shadows. And it goes right up into the eye socket, especially into the eye socket, because the eye socket is a socket. And so it's hiding a lot more along that edge. And there's where the shadow is coming off of the hair. There's the cheekbone shadow just over here. And that is radially applied. Before, after, before, after small shadows but if you look at the edge before it looked so unnatural it looked too clean it looked too perfect and so i'm merging all that down and now with my really really strong number five smudger on low strength i'm going to try to blend out the last little movement of value along those cheek areas to just make that banding reduce a little bit more and just make it feel more skin-like. Right into the edges right here. And I do feel like we need a bit of a shadow line that's a bit darker for that lower neck. And that's just an edge that goes right up into the neckline. I know big changes today, it took a while. And then finally, I'm gonna touch the ear the ear should look like it's on the side of the head, not on the cheekbone. And so it kind of just pushes into the back a little bit. And it sits in between the nose line and the eyebrow line, or eye, eyebrow, same thing. And the thing with this ear is that it doesn't feel natural. so. I just want to close it off in a second, but I'm going to find that jawline that comes out of it. And I'm going to tuck that jawline in. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually hide some of the ear because the, the hairstyle is very clean, which I feel like that's her personality. I like it. Um, but I'm just going to see if I can mess up that hair just a little bit. 
Um, next time, just redacting. <laughs> um, so I'm going to now block in some sections of hair, not too much, just some sections. Just because the hair looked like, a, you know, a piece of wool hanging over her. It didn't feel like hair. And, um, in a new layer, just trying to show where, where some of that hair just gets a bit messy. It doesn't have to be so clean. Some of the hair kind of fell in front. Because I'm just trying to get rid of this very, very eerie ear. I did not plan that. That happened on its own. Wow, I'm so good. And, and I'm just um, going to give the hair less of a straight drop on that far side. Just so the hair feels more like it's draping over shoulders that stick out that have volume. I'm going to let some hair mess up the outer edge. And these are just the natural flyaways that just hang out along the edge. Is there anything that I have missed that you guys have fixated on? Anything the old lady teacher has missed? Sensor bar on, <laughs> Sensor bar on the ear. Oh my God. Um, I'm just going to hide a little bit over here. She got Van Gogh. Um, and then I'm just, the oh, y'all are comedians, I swear. And I'm just going to um, just blend out this area and just kind of fix the ear anatomy. So we have a little flap that we use to cover our ear holes. Don't forget that because once you get that flap there, that little flappity flap right there, that's when the ears start to look like ears. And then I'm just going to add a bit of a hole right behind it, just like that. And this whole area is really flabby and fatty. And so when you get those two together, the, the flap and the fat, then the ear starts to read. You guys work way too hard on those little nooks and crannies of the ear, and you forget the main core move, movers of the ear's anatomy read, which is the flap, this little flap, the hole behind it, that's one big system, and the lobe, which has a bit more, a bit more um, fat to it, more blending. And I'm just adding some more brush strokes for the hair. And I'm just tucking in some of the hair here to make the hair feel a little bit more like it's, uh, it's just, you know, it's, it's not like glued together. You know, it has a sense of that gluedness right now. And a couple of deeper shadows in certain areas. Then I'm going to get Dodge Tool on Highlights, and I'm going to just do a big scoop just like that. And that will make the hair look very realistic, because hair highlights on a dome, on a bend, just like so. And the saturation of that bend is only along the outer sides of that. That's for another day. I can't get into every single tutorial. Um, every single bit as a separate tutorial, but I saturate basically only on the outsides of the highlight of the hair, not in the direct middle. It's not just a big band of different color. And I'm really quickly just going to blend all of that together because this tutorial is getting really long. And the same thing for the bottom getting a highlighter and highlighting like this Bloop. or or like that just any kind of band will work okay and then again blending away so one thing about the lips is that they feel like they're missing some structure so I'm just going to give them more of a Cupid's bow bump along the middle. Okay. All right, so one little issue is that the, the eye that's facing us feels a little bit small. And so I'm just going to give it some size. Give it some width, 
basically. It should not be the same width as the far eye. The far eye is less wide than the close-up eye in three-quarter view. And then the eyebrows don't feel exactly symmetrical, so let me just try to at least get them to be. That's her liquify. And right now she's got not much expression, which is kind of matching her expressionless form and then also her basic hair, um, which reminds me of that one character, that really like kind of deliberately boring character. Um, but uh, it, it really, it's up to you if you want to elevate the storytelling by having a touch more expression. It could be a smile. It could be an eyebrow motion of any kind. It feels like the expression isn't there because you couldn't paint it. But again, that's, that's you know, who knows at the end of the day. All right, so I'm just going to do one more thing, which is drop that value that is near the cheekbones at the top there. So this one is going to have big changes and um, it's going to be a, like it's, it's going to be completely different. Um, so just wanted to show you how much further the rest is from where you are right now. I'm just going to add a couple more flyaways just to give the hair some structure and definition. but also just to know that it's hair we're looking at and hair by definition is just a bit more messy. And some extra flyaways over there. Oh yes, and then one more thing. I keep saying one more thing. I'm just blending the hairline over here just a bit, letting that hairline kind of travel up into the hair and um, cleaning that up. Okie dokie, so let's flatten the image. I don't think I can do the, uh, the overlap paint over before and after, but before. So you can see that there is some, you know, uh, familiarity that's missing. I'm just working out of my template, so I may have made her look a little bit more quote unquote beautiful but I'm just working with anatomy structure that I have based off a template. The hair was just a block. Um, the head had no real anatomy definition that was symmetrical on either side. Um, and the eyebrows are short, uh, shorter than the eye, uh, shorter than the eye socket, it seems. And they don't really correspond with any bone structure. And then after I found that bone structure, I applied it. I tried to stay true to your character. I really did. Um, I may have made her face a little thinner. You can still keep the same size in the face. Um, of course, you can just add whatever weight you want to your characters. The ear feels more tucked behind. Uh, I kept the lipstick and I reduced the amount of brightness in the scene so you have a lot of white in the scene, which raised the value of the skin tone because you were trying to match it with everything else. I tried to keep the eyes the same while still having all those definition points in the eye socket and the lower eyelid. Um, an eye socket that was trying to match yours. Um, this is the width of the nose and the cheek. Um, uh, admittedly, I did shrink. I added the nostril, uh, which you did not have. But all in all, I'm just showing you form and anatomy have a longer way to go with your, with your work. Um, you're relying too much on the lashes too much on the lipstick, too much on outlining the nose. You're outlining the nose. Again, this is all just to show you, you don't need to outline the nose. Um, and uh, uh, you don't need to, you just need to rely on that core shadow of the nose. So before, after, and then the lips, uh, you don't have any cylindrical indication on the rotation of the lip. It's just a front view lip. Uh, there's a lot of things I changed, a lot of things I, I did not change. Um, so it's up to you what you take from this critique hour. Do you feel like I changed too much of the original character? If, if you did, remember there is a certain template I have to pull from in order to complete an illustration within the hour. 
Um, but all of that just to show you that what, what's left for you to make an illustration that feels like one. As for making it feel like an illustration illustration, um, you need some expression, you need to put this, you need to direct this towards something. It could just be a study that you did that you just wanted to characterize. Um, and uh, if you did work from a reference, please post the reference because I don't work with a reference. I only work with what's in my head and what I start off with for the illustration. So at the end of the day, really, I'm just stuck between no reference and what's left in your piece that I don't know how to interpret between, you know, did they do this because of anatomy knowledge or did they do this because uh, they're trying to, you know, maintain a likeness or did they do this because they have... Um, no anatomy knowledge. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, so before, after, before, after, and that's for the changes I made uh, for the face. And of course, I'm going to bring back our um, canvas that I lost in the before and after. So before, after, before, after, before, after. And then if you feel like, I mean, I don't want to change her weight because that might be offensive to some people. So if you feel like the weight needs to be preserved, so I'm just adding more weight to her cheek. Just wanted to really show you the cheekbone mostly with that change. And if I am getting rid of the cheekbone on one side, I got to get rid of it on the other side as well. So before, after, before, after. That's closer to her original weight. Um, and then this is the one where I did not have any extra changes. All right. So with the cheekbones, without the cheekbones before, after, um, the nose was outlined, the lips were not cylindrical or rotated. The background was pure white. The eyes were not in three quarter view. The eyebrows had no bone structure underneath them and they looked, they had that caterpillar look to them, which is like disembodied from the rest of the face. They didn't feel like the hair was growing out of the skin. The hairline was too low. The ear was just a little bit floating out of the head and needs to be tucked into the shadow on the side of the head. The hair was not like, it just looked like a piece of fabric draped over, even though I know you're trying to do hair with the hairline here. Um, no real strands in the hair. Not that what I did was any better, but like at least it's going in the direction where it reads his hair. If I had time, I'd be able to really get into the hair. Um, and the nostrils were kind of missing, but that's okay. But I feel like you intended on a nostril. There's a little nostril right there. And of course, um, there's the fact that the, the skin was kind of too bright, even for pale skin. This character's skin is pretty pale. Um, and then the face was too small for the head. If you take a look, see the head size, the face was too small for the head. I changed the background to anything really that matched with the colors that you already had in the image. And the canvas was changed so it doesn't feel like a passport photo before, after. Um, thank you guys for watching today. I really appreciate you guys coming out to the live stream. If you guys want your work uh, uh, critiqued, all you have to do is go to istabrak.com and click on the subreddit icon right here. And, uh, and that will take you to my subreddit where you can post your work for critique. This is where I found today's piece. Thank you guys for watching today. Next class, this Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern, the Warrior of Light is going to be uh, 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 the theme of the class. And I'm going to finally be taking a look at the Community Challenge submissions. It might be two submissions. It might be five. I have no idea how many people will participate for Thursday. Uh, but please uh, tune in that day. Bookmark it. I can't wait to get, you know, get into it and take a look at all the submissions. And that'll be the last class for 2023. The next class after that might be the second week of November. So I have a nice long break to relax from all the real making and all the editing. All right. Bye, guys.